The RAH-66 Comanche promised to be the helicopter of the future, stealthy, agile, and packed with cutting-edge technology. Yet despite nearly two decades of development and a hefty $7 billion investment, only two prototypes were ever built. The Comanche was meant to replace an aging fleet and give the U.S. Army an edge in the skies, but instead, it ended as one of the most ambitious and costly projects to be scrapped. So what happened? How did a helicopter that seemed destined to revolutionize aerial warfare end up a ghost on the battlefield? In the 1980s, the U.S. Army faced a pressing challenge. Its fleet of reconnaissance and light attack helicopters, many dating back to the Vietnam War, was rapidly aging. Meanwhile, the Cold War was still pushing military advancements forward, making the need for a modern, next-generation helicopter even more urgent. The Army needed an aircraft that could do more than just replace old models like the UH-1 Iroquois, OH-58 Kiowa, and AH-1 Cobra. It needed something that could surpass them in stealth, speed, and lethality. To achieve this, they launched the Light Helicopter Experimental Program with a bold goal to create a versatile platform capable of taking on scout, attack, and utility roles all in one. The result? The RAH-66 Comanche, a rotorcraft that promised to combine cutting-edge stealth technology with unmatched reconnaissance and attack capabilities, all while streamlining the Army's fleet and cutting down operational costs. Initially, the LHX program aimed to replace nearly all of the Army's light helicopters with a single, multi-purpose aircraft. But as the Army refined its requirements, the focus shifted. They now wanted a stealthy machine that could handle both reconnaissance and light attack missions. By the mid-1980s, the priority became clear. A helicopter that could gather intelligence deep in enemy territory, designate targets, and provide light attack capabilities, especially to counter the Soviet Union's advanced air defenses. In 1988, the Army issued a formal request for proposal, and two contractor teams, Bell, McDonnell Douglas, and Boeing, Sikorsky, stepped up to the challenge. By 1991, the Army awarded the Boeing Sikorsky team a $2.8 billion contract to build six prototypes of what would become the Comanche. However, due to budget cuts, only two prototypes were ultimately built. Both took their maiden flights between 1996 and 1999, marking key milestones in the program's development and setting the stage for what the Comanche could achieve. Now, let's take a closer look at the Comanche's key features, beginning with its stealth technology a core element of its role as a next-generation battlefield scout. Its radar cross-section was designed to be 200 times smaller than that of traditional helicopters, making it far more difficult to detect on enemy radar. This was achieved through a sleek, angular design that used composite materials and radar-absorbing surfaces to scatter and absorb radar waves. Every element of the rotorcraft was crafted with stealth in mind, for instance, the ducted tail fan not only helped reduce noise, but also minimized the radar signature. The main rotor blades were built with special materials and radar-absorbing coatings, further reducing radar reflection. Additionally, the overall design featured flush-mounted sensors and antennas, which reduced drag and prevented any protruding parts from reflecting radar signals. In terms of infrared stealth, the platform's exhaust gases were vented through a shrouded tail section, where they were cooled before release. This significantly lowered the rotorcraft's infrared signature, making it harder for heat-seeking missiles to lock onto it, especially during low-altitude operations, where helicopters are particularly vulnerable to infrared-guided surface-to-air missiles. Equally important was the RAH-66's ability to operate much more quietly than other helicopters of its time. Its five-blade main rotor and ducted tail fan were specifically designed to reduce noise, making it harder for enemy troops or acoustic sensors to detect. The shorter rotor blades moved more air at lower speeds, providing the necessary lift while cutting down on the distinctive rotor chop sound that usually gives away a helicopter's position. In fact, the platform was reported to be about 50% quieter than comparable aircraft. Just a quick moment before we move on. If you're new here and you like this content, consider subscribing to sustain our work and help us create more videos like this. Beyond stealth, the Comanche boasted advanced avionics and flight control systems. It was one of the first helicopters to feature a digital fly-by-wire system, replacing traditional mechanical controls with electronic ones. This system gave pilots more precise control, improving maneuverability and response times, especially in challenging conditions like night operations or bad weather. 
The system was triple redundant, meaning that even if two systems failed, the Comanche could still operate safely, enhancing its survivability in high-risk environments. The cockpit featured helmet-mounted displays, which allowed the pilot and co-pilot to access flight and targeting information directly through their visors. Similar to systems in modern fighter jets, this technology enabled the crew to engage targets without looking away from their surroundings. Combined with night vision systems and forward-looking infrared cameras, the aircraft was fully capable of operating in any weather, day or night. The Comanche was more than just a stealthy reconnaissance platform. It was a formidable combat machine, equipped for both air-to-ground and air-to-air -air combat. Its armament was seamlessly integrated into its stealth design, allowing it to carry a range of weapons internally while still maintaining a low radar profile. One of its most innovative features was its internal weapons bays, located on either side of the airframe. These bays were designed to hold a range of munitions while preserving its stealth profile. They could carry up to six AGM-114 Hellfire missiles for striking armored vehicles and bunkers, or up to 12 AM-92 Stinger missiles for defense against aerial threats. For missions requiring extra firepower, the platform could deploy retractable weapon pylons mounted just outside the internal bays. These could carry up to eight more Hellfire missiles, or 16 Stinger missiles, though using them reduced the rotorcraft's stealth as the external pylons increased its radar cross-section. However, in situations where stealth was less critical, the added firepower could be decisive. In addition to missiles, the aircraft was equipped with a chin-mounted XM3 0120mm three-barrel rotary cannon. This lightweight, rapid-firing gun, with a 500-round capacity and a firing rate of 750 rounds per minute, was highly effective against infantry, light vehicles, and low-flying aircraft. Its ability to rotate provided flexible targeting. In terms of raw performance, the Comanche was designed to outmatch traditional helicopters in both speed and agility. During its test flights, the platform reached a maximum speed of around 200 miles per hour, putting it on par with some of the fastest helicopters in the world at the time. Its cruise speed ranged between 155 to 170 miles per hour, providing a balance between speed and fuel efficiency for long-range missions. It had a combat range of about 150 miles, adequate for its reconnaissance and light attack roles. Its ferry range, or distance without refueling, was much longer reaching nearly 1,400 miles with auxiliary fuel tanks. This extended range gave it the ability to deploy over long distances without requiring strategic airlift support, a major advantage for rapid response missions. Now, on paper, the RAH-66 was an impressive machine, but during development, it faced a series of technical challenges. Originally designed to be a lightweight, highly maneuverable aircraft, it quickly became clear that the Comanche was significantly heavier than expected. This added weight impacted its performance in several areas, including maneuverability and payload capacity. To tackle this, engineers worked on design modifications to lighten the airframe and adapt some components. But these changes added time and costs to the project. The increased weight also limited the platform's ability to carry a full load of weapons and fuel simultaneously raising concerns about its viability in combat situations where maximum payload and range were critical. Despite ongoing efforts to reduce weight, these performance challenges persisted, and doubts about the aircraft's practicality in the field remained. Budget overruns were another major problem. At the start, the Army projected the Comanche program would be a relatively cost-effective solution, especially considering its role in replacing several aging helicopter models. But as development progressed, the cost surged. Originally estimated as a multi-billion dollar project, the platform's development expenses skyrocketed with the addition of advanced technology like stealth and digital fly-by-wire systems. By 2004, total spending had exceeded $7 billion, far above initial projections. As costs continued to rise, the Army's ability to fund other critical projects and modernizations was strained. There was genuine concern that if the RAH-66 entered full-scale production, it could consume up to three-quarters of the Army's aviation budget by the early 2000s, forcing military leaders to question the program's sustainability. One of the most persistent challenges was program drift, the gradual expansion of the Comanche's intended roles and capabilities. Initially conceived as a reconnaissance and light attack platform, its role expanded over time to include more complex tasks like target designation, close air support, and communications relay. 
This shift turned the Comanche into a multi-role aircraft, adding to the complexity of the systems required and placing even greater demands on the budget and development timeline. As each new requirement added layers of complexity and cost, managing the project effectively became more difficult. The Comanche needed to incorporate advanced avionics, stealth, and communication systems while still maintaining its core features of speed, stealth, and maneuverability. This scope expansion stretched engineering resources thin and compounded the existing budget and weight issues. The geopolitical landscape also changed significantly in the early 1990s with the collapse of the Soviet Union. The Cold War, which had initially driven the need for advanced reconnaissance and stealth capabilities, was no longer the Army's primary concern. Instead, the focus shifted toward regional conflicts and asymmetric warfare involving non-state actors, where the need for a highly specialized stealth helicopter like the Comanche became less urgent. In this new context, the demand for unmanned aerial vehicles surged. UAVs offered reconnaissance and light attack capabilities similar to the RAH-66, but at a fraction of the cost, without risking pilots' lives. With UAV technology advancing rapidly, the Army increasingly turned to drones for intelligence and strike missions. Additionally, the Army began to prioritize the modernization of its existing helicopter fleet. Established helicopters like the Apache and Black Hawk were seen as more adaptable to the Army's evolving needs. Upgrading these proven platforms was viewed as a more immediate and cost-effective solution than continuing with the complex and costly Comanche program. Maintaining the Comanche project would have required severe budget adjustments, risking other essential Army programs. In the end, the Army concluded that the aircraft's value no longer justified the investment. In February 2004, after nearly two decades of development, the program was formally canceled, marking the end of one of the most ambitious projects in U.S. Army aviation history. So, the RAH-66 Comanche was a bold vision, but in the end, it couldn't outrun its own complexities and skyrocketing costs. With only two prototypes built and $7 billion spent, the platform became a high-tech ghost, more a tale of what might have been than what was. Was it ahead of its time, or just too ambitious to survive the realities of shifting budgets and new military priorities? Either way, the Comanche leaves behind a legacy, reminding us that even the most innovative projects aren't immune to the cutting room floor.